Hi there and thanks for joining me for another Cricut video. Today I'm very excited to show you the new bowl koozie patterns that I have designed in Design Space. You can have these patterns for free by clicking in the link below the video description. Now if you don't have a Cricut Maker, you can still make this, don't worry. Uh, if you have the Cricut Explorer, you can cut these patterns out in cardstock and then cut the fabric and batting by hand. That's they're really easy patterns, not hard to cut out at all. You may remember my original square bowl koozie. I will have that linked in the description below the video as well, but that one was really popular. So I thought I would go ahead and design the patterns for the scalloped and the round style bowl koozie. So without further ado, let's get started. So you may remember the square bowl koozies, which is the most popular one and the one that I did first quite a while ago, but I also came up with a round version and a scallop version for Cricut Design Space. This is the round version here, and this is the scallop version. You can see it has a little bit of a scallop along these edges. So we're going to be making the round one in this video, but both of these are made exactly the same, but there are two different files linked in the description below the video for the two different styles. One's round again, and one is scalloped. And if you want the square one, I'll go ahead and link that as well. So to make this project, you're going to need for each koozie that you want to make, you're going to need two pieces of fabric and you're going to need two pieces of cotton batting. Now this has to be 100% cotton batting. This is, or you could use wrap and zap, but this has to be microwave friendly. You don't want any kind of polyester blend batting. So again, you need 100% cotton batting, you need two pieces, and you also need two pieces of fabric. Everything is cut to 12 by 12 for these patterns. I will be cutting the fabric out on a pink fabric mat, and I'm going to show you a little trick that I use to cut my batting. We don't like to mess up our Cricut mats with the fuzz from batting and the fuzz from felt. So I keep a mat that I use just for batting and just for felt, and this is my little trick. I use a piece of Cricut transfer paper. You know when you peel transfer paper, it has a sticky side and a side that's not sticky. What you're going to do is take an old Cricut mat. Now I've already got one on this mat, so I'm just going to demonstrate how to do it. But what you're going to do is take an old mat that you're no longer using and put the transfer tape, the non-sticky side down so the paper is facing up. And then once you have that stuck to the mat, you're just going to peel that paper off and you'll see here that it is sticky. The side that's left is sticky. And I just taped mine off and I just keep using it until it doesn't stick anymore. And then once it is done, I just rip it off and start with a new one. But this protects my mats and it keeps all that fuzzy stuff from messing up my fabric mats where I have to keep cleaning them. Now I also highly recommend using a brayer when you're working with fabrics and batting. This really helps get the material down so that it doesn't get stuck in the Cricut. You know, it doesn't pick it up because it's stuck really well. And so I'm just going to cut the batting on the green mat that I have prepared with transfer tape. You could also use contact paper if you have some. Any kind of uh, sticky adhesive, that's what I use for the batting. And again, it's just to save the mats. If you wanna cut the batting on the pink mat, you absolutely can, and you can clean your mat. If you just run it under some water and brush it lightly with your fingers and a little bit of Dawn dish soap, and then just hang it to dry, it will remove all that fuzzy stuff. But this just sa saves me that headache. So we're gonna go ahead and hop over to Design Space and get our mats ready to cut out. There are two different design space files for the two koozies. This is the rounded bowl koozie. This is the one that will make the circle one. And this is a scallop bowl koozie. And this one will make the one with the scallops on the edges. So what we're going to do, we're gonna work on the rounded one. And we're just going to click make it. Once you click make it, this first page, you don't need to cut or do anything with. That's just to let you know what each color represents. So you're gonna see the first two mats and on, again, both files, the gray mats are your batting. You're gonna need two pieces of batting, again, cut to about 12 by 12. And then I gave you two different colors for your fabrics in case you want to cut those different so that your bowl koozies are reversible. You can absolutely cut them in the same fabric if you like. So go ahead and cut these out. You're just going to click continue, select your device, under materials, I hit browse all materials and type in batting. 
and there's Inselbright batting and quilt batting. I just choose quilt batting, click done, and then I change the pressure to more, and then go ahead and cut that out. You're gonna use your rotary blade in clamp B, and when I cut the other fabric, depending on what you're cutting, I use cotton, so I just choose the cotton. And again, I usually just put more pressure just to be sure. So go ahead and cut those out. And obviously I have this on fast motion, but you can see here how the contact paper or transfer tape works on the mat to save the integrity of your fabric mats when you're working with this fuzzy or felt material. And then I did switch back to the pink fabric mat to cut the cotton. Don't forget to change your settings on or in design space to cotton. And you can see just how nicely that is to cut the batting. It's so much easier than cutting it by hand. And this mat is still sticky enough to go ahead and put my second piece of batting, but all that fuzz is now on this piece of transfer tape that I can just change out when it gets, when it's not sticky anymore. Okay, so now we have all of our pieces cut out. You can see here I used the pink fabric mat for the cotton fabric and it cut that very nicely. You should have two pieces of batting cut out and two pieces of fabric. I've already lined these two up, but what you wanna do is line the fabric up with the batting. Now the batting is slightly smaller um, than the outer fabric. So what I like to do is line up the corners just like this and work my way around. Just wanna line those up, making sure the corners are lined up and it doesn't have to be exact, but you wanna get it pretty close. Once you have all of those aligned, you're going to take it over to your sewing machine and you're going to sew from the V to the V that's directly across from it and across this way. Now, totally optional if you want. I like to go ahead and sew another one, another X from the rounded points, but that's totally optional. Just, you have to sew from V to V and if you wanna do extra, you can. I think it looks kind of neat, and I'll kind of show you how I do that. This isn't a great angle, but you can see I'm just sewing with a 2.5 inch stitch, and I'm sewing from one V to the other. And there's no race or contest or prize for going fast. If you need to go slow, go slow. If you wanna mark it with a fabric marker, go ahead. But you can see I just sewed from V to V and now I'm going to sew from rounded corner to the opposite rounded corner. And I just think it looks a lot neater. Make sure when you go through the center that you slow down and make sure that you're going exactly through the center so that all of your stitches kind of line up into a pinwheel. Once you have one piece done, go ahead and do the exact same thing to the second piece. Here you can see I'm doing the orange fabric now. And when you're all done, they should look something like this. It's a little bit easier to see here on the orange one. You can see my stitch lines. Again, I went from rounded edge to rounded edge and from corner to corner. And if I turn this one over, you can see it a little bit better. But again, if, as long as you have from the center of the V's across, you just have the two stitches, you're fine. Now you're gonna fold these in half so that the batting is facing outwards, just like this and you can clip or pin them if you want. I generally don't even, don't do either. I just take it over and sew it, but if you want to pin it, absolutely pin it in half to make sure things don't move. But you wanna make sure those V's are lined up. You're going to do the same for both pieces, and then you're going to take it over to the sewing machine and you're going to backstitch at the beginning and end and sew both of those ends shut. So you're gonna sew from here and here. So the two corners shut. And you can see mine here. Those are sewn together. So we're gonna open it up and close it the other way. Line those seams up, line the V's up. And we're gonna, again, sew the V's closed. Now here I'm using the Wonder Clips. That's an easy way to do it. And again, you're gonna do both sides. You're gonna open it up and fold it the other way. And again, you're going to sew the V's closed just like you did the first time. You're going to sew right where those clips are and make sure that you backstitch at the beginning and the end of your stitches. So sew from there to there and from there to there on both pieces. 
And now we're looking something like this. You're going to open it up and you've got a round bowl. Should look pretty close to this. You're going to turn one of them right side out, leave the other one wrong side out. So you're going to put it fabric side to fabric side. You're going to put, so the batting is on the, looking on the outside. The two pieces of fabric are touching and you're going to line up your seams. Now again, if you're doing the scallop one, you're going to do this exactly the same way. You're going to line up these seams first, line up where your scallops scoop down, and on the round one, you just line up the seams. It's the exact same construction for all of the bowl koozies, the square, the round, and the scalloped edge. So you line up those seams, and then you're going to clip the rest of it together. And once you have this all clipped together like this, you're going to leave a space open and I'm going to mark it with some straight pins just to differentiate it from the rest of it. And that's going to be the space that I am not going to sew between. I'm not going to sew between the two pins, but I'm going to backstitch and sew all the way around up to the other pin and backstitch, but not sew between the two pins. Now I just use the width of my presser foot. It's totally up to you what you want to use and what you feel comfortable with, but I find that the easiest. I just use the width of the presser foot and sew right along that edge. And now we've got our two pieces sewn together with the exception of between those two pins. We're going to remove the pins and we're going to reach inside and turn this right side out. Once you have it right side out, you want to use a purple thing or I like to just use a bone folder, I'm a former paper crafter, just something to reach inside and push those seams out nice and right to the edge. And then you're going to push the two fabrics into each other like this so that it makes a bowl. And I like to just kind of roll those seams out. And then when you get to this opening, you're going to, it's naturally going to want to close, but it's a little bit trickier because you have the batting. So you're going to tuck that fabric around that batting and then you're going to close this up as if you had sewn it shut. So just use your fingers and work it together. Try to keep it rounded. And if you're doing the scallop bowl koozie, it's easiest to leave the opening on one of the scallops. In other words, not down in the corner where you're going to be changing because that's harder to close up and have it look nicely. But it's totally up to you. And again, I'm just using a bunch of clips just to hold it in place until I can get it sewn. And I want to make sure everything stays smooth and round. All right, I have that opening all closed up. I'm just rolling those seams out. You might want to take it over to your iron and give it a little press along those edges. Just lay it down and make those are sure those are nice and flat. That'll make it easier to sew. But you're going to take it over to the sewing machine and you're going to sew as close to the edge as you comfortably can and close that opening up and go all the way around the bowl. And this is what it'll look like when it's done. Again, it's totally reversible. We have the flamingos on one side and the orange polka dot on the other. But your bowl koozie or your bowl should fit right down in there and this is the rounded one. And again, the scallop one is made exactly the same. Here are the ones I showed at the beginning of the video. Here is a, another round one and the scallop one. Are all a basic cereal bowl size. These are Fiesta Ware bowls, but I have several other bowls and they all fit. So again, here's the scalloped. That first one's the round. That flannel one to my left is also a round. And then we have the original square one. I have all of the files linked in the description below the video. And don't forget, these are all reversible. So you kind of get two looks out of one koozie. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, subscribe, and share. And when you subscribe, don't forget to click that little bell icon. That will tell you or send you notifications every time that I put out a new video. Please visit me on my blog at laurienunamaker.com. And until next time, never stop making. See ya. Bye.